We already have the groups of the Copa Libertadores decided and so me and Silva got together again and we're gonna rank all the teams that qualify to show you guys which teams have the most chance of winning and which teams have the most chance to lose all 6 games. Remember to like, subscribe and leave a comment telling me which team you think is gonna win Copa Libertadores this year. Now onto the rankings. Our good friends Alianza Lima, um, do you wanna comment something on them? I think they will be like a little disappointed. Like they will go out of the group. Okay, so so you are being nice. <laughs> I'm being nice, yeah. Peruvian teams, like I said, in South America, they are nice. They are really good for the big teams to start out against. I don't remember a lot of their players. I know uh, Carlos Zambrano, who used to be a center back for Boca, is playing there. Uh, he was so bad, but apparently he cuts it in Peru because, you know, the league is not really competitive. Before this was a get the bag team, at least they will get some points because before they had this huge losing streak, they had like um, 37 games without winning a single game in Libertadores. It was like, I don't know, like 15 years without winning a Libertadores game, which they finally broke uh, last year when they beat uh, Libertad on the road mind you. So that, that is a stain that Libertad will always have to deal with. They gave Alianza Lima a win. I feel like maybe they have the potential to get another win. Maybe they can qualify for Sudamericana getting the third place, but they are definitely not getting run of 16. And this is a team that, like you said, people just start but again, like, like Julian Alvarez, who scored like six goals against them in one game. Atletico Mineiro. Uh, they will probably be around like dark horses, probably. Dark horses candidates. I, I was thinking more candidates. Yeah, maybe candidates, you can put them there. Like either way, it's fine. And they've always been competitive ever since they won the league, ever since that year. They've been really competitive in these competitions. Uh, Paulinho has been great for them. He was from Bayer Leverkusen, came back to Brazil. He mm -hmm. was one of the top scorers of the league last year. And of course, everyone knows Hulki. He's been sco he's still scoring goals for them. The main man. Exactly. And recently, they uh, in January, they signed Gustavo Scarpa from Nottingham Forest. He was he used to be at Palmeiras, was one of the best players mm -hmm. when they won back-to-back -back Libertadores. Now he's at Atlético Mineiro. And he has been fine there, to be fair. And, and they can be candidates. They're like they're not an easy team to face. That is something that I was going to mention, that, yeah. you know, they, they went onto a huge winning streak and they pushed actually for to win Brasileira. Like you said, the great talent they have and the massive winning streak that they went on at the end of last year. I feel like they have enough to, especially, you know, Brazilian teams always intimidate in, in Libertadores. So I feel like they always have an edge above other teams. And I can see them being candidates for sure. Barcelona, who are not playing in the Champions League, uh, apparently. No, from Ecuador. I'm debating between will compete and dark horse. I feel like last time they were in Libertadores, it was a bit disappointing because obviously we've seen them in uh, the semis in 2022, um, where they lost to they lost to Flamengo, right? I'm pretty sure. 21. 21. Um, 21, they lost in the semis yeah. to Flamengo. Um, yeah. Since then, the, the international uh, appearances they've had have not been as convincing. I'm going to put them as dark horse just because I'm starting to believe more and more in the Ecuadorian teams. Uh, definitely not candidates. I feel like they are barely dark horse. I, I'm really tempted to put them in will compete, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt for now and say that they can maybe push for run of 16 for finals again. I can, yeah, I can see Barcelona in the quarterfinal. Like they are, they are a decent team. They have competed. They have went to the semifinals recently. With how Ecuadorian teams are, especially in their stadium, it's not easy to play in. And even away, if they get a result in the in Ecuador, they will go away. They will defend through their lives. It will not be easy to score for you. So they can be mm -hmm. dark horses. They can go to quarterfinal. Yeah. Next up, Bolivar obviously were kind of like the Cinderella story of the last Copa Libertadores making it to the quarterfinals where they lost to Inter. They beat Atletico Paranaense on penalties at their stadium, which I didn't expect uh, them to do. I thought that, you know, they had the altitude advantage. They got a, a bit of a lead, but they were going to crumble uh, on the road, but they didn't. They actually surprised me. I feel like I, I have my... I don't know if they can repeat that again. I will have them and they will compete. I feel like 
with some luck they can make round of 16 again but i don't think they can repeat for finals again um i feel like their expectations should probably be to qualify for copa sudamericana uh, finishing third in the group obviously it depends of, on what group they get but for now i feel like uh, i have them and they will compete just because i don't have faith that they can repeat what they did uh, last year yeah i will have bolivar and will compete i feel like last year obviously they deserve to go through but at the same time it was also kind of lucky because you know what penalties is always 50 50. you never know it's gonna win at it. they have they have, they're one of the best bolivian teams i think they will go minimum round of 16 this time i don't think they're gonna go to the quarterfinal oh dear um botafogo Obviously, they qualified from the preliminary stages after beating uh, Bragantino. Everyone was talking about how they bottled the league. Probably like black horses, because this year they have been shit for you, for me. Because last year, obviously, they bottled the league like in the worst way possible. Like they had how much? How much of a point? Like 12, 15? I, th- like, I think it right was there. like seventeen at some point. Seventeen. Or something. They even went against Palmeiras, led 3-0 at home at halftime. And they bottled it 4-3. They even missed a penalty in that game after like around 3-2. They could have made it 4. Bro. They missed the penalty. They bottled it really badly. And now this year, this year they lost Lucas Perry, their starting goalie, to Lyon. And their starting centre-back, Adrielson, to Lyon as well. So in this year, they have been really struggling, Botafogo. If anything, I was surprised they beat Bragantino and... Uh, preliminary stages. Junior Santos carried them in that. So I will have them in dark horses. I don't see them going for maybe quarterfinal. Definitely not semis. Yeah, I have the same feelings. It was just so sad to see how they crumbled uh, last season, you know, because like I said, they, they usually had leads and they either bottled them like in the last minutes or they had a huge lead, like you said, against Palmeiras and then they considered those four goals and Nah, it, it, everything seemed to go wrong for them in those last few games. Caracas, Caracas, Caracas. Venezuela. This is either will disappoint or get the bag. Kind of feeling get the bag because yeah. the, the other teams, they, they kind of look stronger. Right? Clearly a, a get the bag team, you know, probably one of the best teams from Venezuela, but it just doesn't cut it at this level anymore. Yeah, they are probably going to be the team that you will want to get uh, in the draw and start but against sadly exactly yeah the venezuelan teams are like one of those that you will love to get in your group they're like the start team they're, they're just there they're just there you know cerro porteño paraguay a team that usually disappoints competes dark horse they are always like around this area looking at what the opposition they may face i feel like i will give them the benefit of the doubt and put them under will compete you know olympia is not here anymore so they probably have to be one of the teams that have to carry paraguay to later stages in this competition i don't know if they can get like Round of 16, potentially. You know, they don't have the same pedigree as Olympia, obviously. I, I often doubt them when it comes to international competition, but because Olympia isn't here, I feel like they have something to prove. They are a candidate to disappoint, honestly, but I'm going to give them that benefit of the doubt, like I said. Yeah, Cerro Porteño, one of the best Paraguayan teams. They're like, will compete. They can go to quarterfinal. Paraguayan teams in Lipetatores. You never know. Yeah, Paraguayan teams, they can always like either disappoint or suddenly compete out of nowhere, like we saw last year. So Nacional, obviously uh, last year, went out in the round of 16 in penalties to Boca. Often the most competitive of the two big clubs, them and Peñarol, they are the biggest clubs in Paraguay. But Nacional is usually the one that turns up in international tournaments. I have them and they will compete. I don't think they have enough to going to dark horses just because of this poor state of the Uruguayan league that we talked about. I feel like the same translate to Libertadores. They have potential to make round of 16 again, but something past that is going to be very difficult. They are going to need a favorable draw, in my opinion. Yeah, Nacional, they they have, will have to be lucky to get like a favorable draw for them. Obviously, I think they will go through from the groups, like round of 16, but quarterfinals will be generous for them. And last year, they went out to Boca, but... They did compete in that game, you know. They brought it to penalties at La Bombanera. Yeah. So, like, they're not bad, but, like, they're not that good either. So, I think they will go, like, round of 16. Definitely. 
And if they're generous, maybe quarterfinal. Potentially, yeah. I'm having like the same read. We have Cobresal from Chile. Cobresal, who, similar to Botafogo, but not to the same degree, were top of the Chilean league for a long time and ended up losing it in the final match day. Um, I feel like they are potentially a team that can compete. I don't trust Chilean teams, really. I feel like Chilean teams are premium candidates to will disappoint. I'm going to put them under will disappoint the same way that they couldn't get it done in the league. I feel like they are not going to cut it in the group stage. Potentially, they can get that third place to go to Sudamericana, but I feel like that's that's being generous because it's possible that they finish last in the group. But at least, you know, they pick up some points. They are not completely useless and get beat up every game. Yeah, with Chilean teams, I don't trust them in Libertadores. The Chilean fans, they complain like, oh, they want more spots for Libertadores. But then their teams, they don't show it. Like, they don't show like why they deserve to like, get more spots. Following up with Chilean teams, Colo Colo, the biggest club in Chile, they've had to battle their way to get uh, to these latter stages of the competition. Obviously, last year, um, they got grouped and they went to Sudamericana and got eliminated in Sudamericana as well. So, you know, they didn't, they haven't had the greatest of records. Obviously, like you said before, they now have Arturo Vidal, but is Arturo Vidal going to be a difference for them? I don't think so, honestly. I have them and they will disappoint. I feel like they obviously being the big club they are in, at least in Chile, they have something to live up to and they will fall under those expectations and probably, you know, qualify for Sudamericana again. It's going to be very difficult for them to make round of 16 again. Um, I don't think they're going to make knockouts and that's probably going to be a disappointment for them and their fans with the signings they made and them advancing from the preliminary stages, which were pretty tough. Um, they probably think they can get round of 16, but I have this read that they are going to disappoint again. I think Colo Colo will also disappoint. I feel I have this feeling they're gonna go out the group stages again. Vidal is obviously mm -hmm. a big signing for PR, of course. Like he's probably the most iconic Chilean right in their history. I saw what he did in Brazil. He did really nothing. Next up, Estudiantes de la Plata, obviously a team with a lot of heritage in this competition. They have won Libertadores four times, which is the same amount of times as uh, River Plate, who is over there. So, you know, they are obviously a, a big club, at least when it comes to Libertadores. But in recent years, I feel like they've built up a lot of good rosters, but they never show it in the international stage. Uh, I saw them go out against Bragantino, Corinthians, like in Sudamericana last year against Corinthians, I couldn't believe they lost that game. It was just another Casio masterclass and then lost on penalties, but they were by far the most dominating team. I feel like I have to put them under dark horses because they are just so inconsistent. I really like their squad, I really like how they play, I really like their mentality, but they just lose random games out of nowhere and I feel like that could definitely cost them here. I think they won't have troubles progressing from the group stage. Group stage should be easy for them. But in the knockouts, like I, I could see them going out in the round of 16 if they have a bad day. And quarterfinals, I feel like it's going to be a roadblock that is going to be very hard for, for them to get through, especially because at that point they are going to compete against really, really strong teams. I have to put them under dark horse. I would like to push them higher because they're a team from Argentina and they have a lot of heritage, but they are too inconsistent to be up there. Yeah, to the answers, they are not a bad team. They do compete, but they, they bottle it. So I have them like quarterfinal. Mingao. Favorite, um, easily. Easy favorites. Yeah, Flamengo, the team we are building, unbelievable. The best in South America right now for me, especially with Chi Chi coming in. He has improved it so, so much. Like he improved pretty much the whole entire starting lineup. And the depth we have is like unbelievable. When Copa America comes, most of our starters are going to go play for their countries like Arascaeta, De La Cruz, Pulgar, possibly Pedro, Fabricio Bruno for Brazil. The backups we have is not even that bad. It's mm -hmm. pretty quality backups like Gabi Go, Ayuton Lucas. It's not just the goals, the defense has been amazing. Like we haven't conceded at all of Tite in official games this year. Like, not even one goal. Yeah, for me, Flamengo is the number one candidate. I feel like, obviously, 
I'm not putting the pressure on them to win it or it's a failure, but they are the number one candidate. Nico de la Cruz, I cannot tell you how much uh, River is missing de la Cruz right now. And the Arrascaeta was already one of my favorite players in South America. And they are providing for Pedro, who's such a clinical striker, like you mentioned. And I'm going to be there for my boy Rossi. Like, I want Rossi to do well because he was so good for Boca. And I feel like he deserves so much more. The reigning champions, Fluminense. I feel like they have to be favorites again, right? They have a little bit. They climbed a little bit this year, but they are still not that bad. I feel like they can still go to the semis this year. Like They have that winning mentality now. It's going to be really strong, obviously. They Under the knees, they were such a machine. Fortunately, it didn't go well with the Silesa, only six games. He got sacked. So now, like, <laughs> he has full control at Fluminense now. He has one job to focus on. They have the dream of going for Thiago Silva to come back. The return so... of Thiago Silva would have been massive. And obviously, we cannot forget about Marcelo and Ganso, who I think is one of their best players. Um, and obviously, we didn't even mention him, Germán Cano, like their striker. Every season, banging goals. Um, John Arias, who I think has been called up for the Colombian national team because he was also a very powerful winger. And John Arias? This team is just really, really good. And we didn't even mention André, the midfielder of Fluminense. Right. Because European teams are looking for him. You know, I feel like it's going to be very difficult for them to go back to back, but for just for the team they have and for the Nice, I feel like I have to keep them on their favorites. And keeping up with more Brazilian teams, we have Gremio, who have also returned to Libertadores. Uh, Gremio, obviously, definitely declined a lot after Suarez went to Miami. But with Renato Gaucho, they still play decently they still play well i can see them like around quarterfinals semifinals so i put them like dark horse candidates somewhere around there they the suarez replacement was uh diego costa who oh. somehow is still oh, wow. getting a job who's still somehow getting club offers he has been scoring some goals and they also got soteldo from santos the little venezuelan Ooh. On so I, I definitely have the match candidates. I feel like they are better than every team that we have at our horse currently. So I'm going to keep them as candidates, you know, semi-finals potential, <laughs> but quarter-finals could be. Next, we move on to the current champions of Chile, um, Huachipato. I feel like they are the one hope for Chile to compete because I feel like Cobresal and Colo Colo just have this this gen inside them that will force them to bottle it at some point. Huachipato, you know, they came clutch in the last match day and managed to clench the title. With that determination, maybe they are the one Chilean team that I can trust will compete. I don't know if necessarily they will make the run of 16, but they will make it close. For now, I'm going to say will compete just because, you know, they are the reigning champions of their country and they had to come up clutch to actually get that title as well. Independiente del Valle. Very tough for me to rank this team because it, they are always a team that I want to put around candidates because, you know, we, we saw how they made the final in 2016, then they won Sudamericana in 2019 and then in uh, 2022. So, you know, with the Ecuadorian teams in the Ecuadorian League, they always uh, are at the top. They have a great project. So many young prospects that always come from this club. I always want to put them as candidates, but they always disappoint. Like last year, they went out in the run of 16 against uh, Deportivo Pereira from Colombia. Independiente, I, I want to trust them to, you know, compete against the teams from Argentina, compete against the teams from Brazil, but they just disappoint me. I'm gonna have to put them dark horses. I, I feel like I cannot push candidates. They tend to disappoint me and I feel like I'm getting tired of trusting this team into going far to make it, you know, another final, another semi-final. I feel like it's, it seems to be too much for them uh, currently, so... I'm going to have to say that they are dark horses. Potentially, on a good day, they can get quarterfinals. More than that, it's going to be really, really difficult. Yeah, Independiente del Valle, they did win the Sudamericana two years ago, even when the Recopa final. Like, they're still yeah. decent. They're still decent. Junior, probably uh, my favorite team to watch from Colombia because they are always the team that their fans are hyping up the most, saying that, you know, they they have one good game and, you know, it's like, hold on, Real Madrid, we are coming for you. Definitely will disappoint. Colombian teams just have this thing in them that they have to ruin it at the worst time. 
and Junior is like the experts of that. Them and Independiente Medellin are like the teams that always bottle it when it matters the most. And just because of the expectations they always have, I feel like Junior is a prime candidate to be in a great position to qualify to Arnold 16 and bottle it at the end. Yeah, Junior, I, I love their fans a lot. They are always they always overhype their team. I remember I, rem- I, I remember facing this team in 2017 away. Like you said, they will disappoint. It's always very tough. Like, like Libertadores is a different different pedigree, you know. We saw that Atletico Nacional, who was like their main team, got eliminated in the preliminary stages. So now they have to rely on teams like Junior and they are just not good enough, I feel like. Um, Libertad, we were talking about them earlier, uh, champions of the Paraguay League. I'm thinking they will compete or Dark Horse. I kind of want to give them Dark Horse. They can be like the Olympia of this year, but you know it's it's always gonna be tough when they have to face like a really really good team. But against the lesser teams, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, they lost to Alianza Lima last year, and I will never forget that. This year, I feel like you know with the confidence of the title, they have enough to make the round of 16. I feel like they this is a team that should progress from their group. They should be making the round of 16, and after that, uh, they probably have a good chance of making quarterfinals as well. Nothing after that in the quarterfinals they probably get destroyed but i i have them dark horse currently um probably will compete but i'm gonna give them that benefit benefit of the doubt like i'm doing with many teams at this point yeah libertad they could they could go to the quarterfinals the champions of copa sudamericana liga de quito Obviously, now they have two Sudamericanas and one Libertadores. They did lose uh, the the Ricopa to Fluminense, who uh, Ecuadorian fans were very confident that they were going to win because they are, Liga is always a team that beats Fluminense, so now they couldn't. Um, I feel like they should either be dark horse or candidates because they've kept most of their core and they can definitely compete against the big teams as they've shown in... I want to say candidates. I want to say candidates because I will, they've I will shown that they them, can I will also win trophies. You know, I will also put them at candidates level. They won a Sudamericana and in the Recopa final, they had a really good game against Fluminense, both home and away. They played really good as a collective. At the Maracana, they gave a really good fight, even though they lost. They gave a really, really good fight. So um, I will put them at candidates because they have shown like they can compete against the top teams. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it that we have a team that isn't from Argentina and Brazil actually push into candidate territory. This one, you know, I, Quito, they, they Quito would not be big to win Libertadores, but they could. They could. Yeah, they, they are the best team that is not from Brazil or Argentina for sure. Liverpool, who... Um, Currently, obviously, top of the Premier League. Actually, no, because it's Arsenal, but... No, different Liverpool, who is just here to get the bag. Like we said, with the Uruguay League, um, we really cannot trust these teams. They were in Libertadores uh, last year as well, and, you know, they got some results here and there, but really not a team that you can trust to compete. Liverpool, I will also put them, like, get the bag. I, I don't see them getting many points, honestly. Maybe a draw here and there, but... A win is going to be very difficult. Millonarios from Colombia, a team that um, is always pushing that they are one of the best in Colombia. But, you know, in the league, maybe they show it. But internationally, they are always, they will disappoint. I feel like they are on the same course as, ju- as Junior, you know, kind of getting hyped by, by their fan base. Um, they have many good players from the Colombian league and they are obviously going to, obviously very talented as always. But... When the pressure is on, is when these players suddenly forget how to play football. And that happens the same with Junior, the same with Atletico Nacional, the same happens with uh, Independiente Medellin, and the same happens with Millonarios. I feel like with Colombian teams, for me, it's always the same story. They are going to disappoint. I I think that Millonarios is a prime candidate for finishing third and qualifying for Sudamericana and maybe being a threat in Sudamericana, maybe Sudamericana would be a better place for them to be, but in Libertadores, they they really cannot go up against these type of teams. They are going to get destroyed. So, yeah, I I have them and they will disappoint. Yeah, I have Millonarios as well. That will disappoint. The Colombian teams in Libertadores, they really don't turn up, to be honest. They don't have the mentality to like mm-hmm. 
competes at the high level like round of 16 is like where they go out it's it's like a roadblock that they just cannot get over and it happens to all of them i, I don't know how but it happens to all of them it's not one specific team that flops every time like all the teams have this consistent nature of just not performing when the pressure is on when they are like a, i guess a very good team they just cannot get over that hurdle and yeah millionarios they they are gonna disappoint palestino from chile I'm going to have them under will disappoint probably like comparable to Cobresal and Colo Colo and um, they also came from the preliminary stages so I've, at least I've seen some of their games and I see that they are somewhat competitive to the point that they are not going to get destroyed every game they are not going to make it out of the group I feel like they they are another team that maybe will make it difficult for you but eventually you're going to beat yeah yeah I also have them at will disappoint at least you know and Chilean teams overall they're not really that great like I don't have any expectations for them like for me group stage and that's where go, they go out the champions of Brazil do they still belong in favorites because obviously we've seen them win Libertadores multiple times in the recent years and if not they make the final and if not they make semis like this team is always up there are they still the favorites or what definitely the definitely Palmeiras always has to be the favorites now they're always competing they always have the mentality they always have the players and this year they will definitely go to the semis again possibly the final but Enrique leaving mid-year to Real Madrid is could hurt them because obviously now he's their starting striker and like they're comfortable with him now but he is leaving to Real Madrid mid-year they both they got the last at all from Almeria he used to play at Flamengo with a good mm -hmm. striker prospect and he's from I feel like he's going to be the Enrique replacement and they also have Rafael Vega one of their best players as well uh, Weberton is still there I feel like he declined a little bit last year obviously he did help them win the league but this year I don't know and they have a young prospect called Esteban William coming up so yes. he, he could be he could ma be making this like impact late in the season like Enrique did last year so they're definitely favorites they're definitely up there yeah, yeah like you said Said, we're gonna have to see how they deal without uh Hendrik, but the rest of the team they've kept pretty much the the squad that is always there like you said Weberton, Gustavo Gomez, Rafael Vega, Piquerez already built up a lot of chemistry and we, they are proven to always be successful in this competition so definitely in the favorites. Peñarol at one point you know they still have a lot of heritage in this competition one of the biggest clubs in the continent um but like the entirety of Uruguay, they've fallen off. I'm gonna have them and they will disappoint. I feel like they are gonna do worse than Nacional, than their rivals. Um, last year they were in Sudamericana and they got zero points in the group. So like not even in Sudamericana they could compete. Now they've qualified again for Libertadores because you know the Uruguay League doesn't pose much of a threat to them. Um, so I can see that they probably improved a bit to the point that they are not gonna get zero points again But uh, I feel like it's gonna be hard for them to progress from the group because the Uruguay League just doesn't have the quality anymore to compete with the other leagues in South America so they've fallen behind and I feel like Peñarol is one of the main exponents of that and they are gonna disappoint for me Yeah, yeah, Uruguayan teams, they have fallen off a lot It's mm. sad to see like how bad they are now, they will definitely disappoint River Plate so obviously um they've lost de la cruz and that is big last year they also lost uh, lucas beltran who went on to fiorentina and was probably their best striker they are now playing with borja who has been probably the best striker in the argentine league i would say um they made some big signings like uh, Vishagra from uh, talleres who is a very very good cdm and Demichelis has been trying out very different tactics. At times it works, at times it doesn't, which is why at times this team can be a little inconsistent. I feel like they, they should be favorites. They should be favorites with their squad they have and obviously the pedigree and they are always uh, competing at the top level in Libertadores even though they have few um, round of 16 exits uh, the last few years, like last year against Inter and in 2022 in against uh, Vélez it was that they lost in the round of 16 so like it's been a while since they've been in the quarterfinals the semifinals these latter stages of the competition and I feel like they should be making it up back up there it's tough because I I could maybe drop them down to candidates because of the 
these is con inconsistencies that I see, and sometimes they are not creative because they are really struggling without uh, De La Cruz. Obviously, uh, Nacho Fernandez came back, came back from Mineiro, but he's not the same as, as he was when he left. The defense is still a big question mark. Armani in goal, at times he's, he's great and at times he's really, really bad. Yeah, inconsistent. I, I will still have them in favorites just because I feel like they are obligated to give us a good performance, but I don't know. They are definitely the worst of this list of favorites and they could possibly lose to the teams in candidates, but because of the expectations that they have and yeah, I'm gonna keep them as favorites. I would also think like River Canada uh, <clears throat> favorite because of the team they have. Even with De La Cruz leaving, they still have a good team. They do have a young prospect as well, Claudio Echeverri, but... He's going uh, at the end of the year, so he's going to oh, complete yes. this year uh, with so River. Be... But he, he's not even much of a starter, like he, he plays on and off, one game yes, one game no, and... Um, same as uh, Mastantuono, who is also a really good young prospect that they have. Uh, the, the River Academy is always producing some great talents, but De Michelis is not a great fan of using the, the young talent. So I don't know. I feel like maybe he's not going to play Echeverri as much because, you know, he's going to leave. So he's not going to, he doesn't want to become dependent on a player that's going to leave eventually, although he's going to complete the year. So he could play in Libertadores. I feel like he's probably going to be more of a super sub and could make a difference, like you say, but I don't know. Yeah, I also think the same about Echeverri, but I remember they played that one final. Echeverri started and he was amazing and that's like, I couldn't mm -hmm. believe like how good he was. That I don't think they're going, they're probably not going to start him a lot because they don't want to be dependent on a player that's going to leave next year. Yeah, I will still have, I have the river in favor, but the problem I have with them is like whenever they face a Brazilian team recently, they go out. Ever since Gallardo left, it's been going downhill for them. But let's see what Dimechelis can do. But from what I have heard, I don't think River fans really like him. Dimechelis has had problems with dealing with the dressing room. He doesn't like big personalities in the dressing room. He had a, some beef with Enzo Perez, and Enzo Perez end up, ended up leaving to Estudiantes, actually. River fans don't like him because he doesn't use the youth, like I mentioned with Echeverri. He has beef with the big players, and you know the, there's always like a, a problem in the dressing room uh, with River, it seems. Like every, every week we hear a new story coming from the dressing room, so yeah, the, the Michelis doesn't seem to be the best manager when it comes to the group, but when it comes to his tactics, he's really, really sharp. For now, I'm going to trust him. I hope that they don't do well, but, um, you know, maybe they can exit round of 16 again. But I, I feel like they should be making semis again, quarterfinals at least, at least quarterfinals. Like, not making quarterfinals again would be really, really bad for them. Moving on to Rosario Central, who are technically the current holders of the... Argentinian league. I have to put them under dark horses. Would probably push them down to will compete because this year they haven't been that great. Uh, their best player is probably Campas, the Colombian winger who scored a lot of goals for them. Um, they are still managed by Miguel Angel Russo, who is a, a coach that I really, really respect. I feel like they have this competitive gen in them that they can do great things in when the pressure is on, but the, the tactics are not there. I feel like they are always relying on individual talent to push them over the edge. They have Malcorra, who is also a great player, great free kick taker as well. He won them the last uh, two derbies against Newell's, but in those derbies, Rosario didn't play well at all. And it was just Malcorra with a moment of magic, just pushing them over the edge. I feel like if they are going to get far in this competition, it's probably going to be the same. They are just going to hold on um, and just they are going to need a moment of magic to qualify. But it's going to be difficult for them against teams with higher quality, especially from Brazil. I feel like they are probably going to go out in round of 16 or quarterfinals if they're lucky. So we have to put them under their course. Yeah, I've heard good things about Rosario Central. Like you said, they are technically the champions of Argentina. I heard the goal is... Yes, uh, Fatura Brown. Yeah. yeah, I heard he is good. They are dark horse. They can cause trouble. Like quarterfinals, I can see them going. Once they mm -hmm. face a Brazilian team, I'm afraid it's over for them. At that point, it's going to be really, really difficult. They are on the same tier as Botafogo because Botafogo is like the only Brazilian team I feel like they could beat, but 
Gremio, Atlético Mineiro, Palmeiras, they are very far off from the, that level. They are not going to do well. San Lorenzo, I'm also going to have them as dark horse. I don't think they are candidate level. Under Insua, they improved a lot. At one moment in 2022, it looked like they were going to be fighting relegation. And then Insua came on and he built a team around uh, a lot of youngsters. You know, they qualified for Sudamericana, they gave it a good go, they went out to Sao Paulo. Now they qualified for Libertadores after doing well in the league. Currently not doing as well. Insua is having a hard time figuring out his tactics if he wants to play with two number nines, with uh, Barreiro, the Paraguayan striker, and Tarragona, who they signed in this window. They still have some talent like uh, Shiai on the right wing, who was playing at the Under-20 World Cup for Argentina. They signed someone for goalkeeper, I cannot remember the name off the top of my head now, but him, Altamirano, Altamirano, he's a good goalkeeper. I don't know, they, they are still figuring out the tactics and they are very inconsistent too. They they had a very slow start to the league, now they are picking up some form. And Nahuel Barrios is going to be their main uh, force in attack very dribbly boy on the wing same with rosario central they they are still figuring out stuff um they are having finan financial troubles as well so i don't think they are going to be able to sign anyone in the summer or anyone important at least so they are not going to be able to strengthen ahead of the run of 16 so i feel like they are gonna definitely beat most of the teams they come across in the group stage but against brazilian teams uh, the strong ecuadorian teams against if they face like river and stuff they are gonna have a real tough time and they are probably gonna go out to round of 16 quarterfinals as well i watched some of the games the goalie the goalie they signed i think right they signed him right he's really good they can go they can go to the quarterfinal if they get lucky if they face both the fall and quarterfinal they can go to the semis this is a problem that i'm i'm finding with argentinian teams like uh, i find no team that is consistent when we were looking at sudamericana as well boca is not consistent either so like consistency is being the main factor for Argentinian teams and I feel like if we can get it right in one tournament we can potentially go on to win it but everything has to go right exactly. at one point it looks like we might slip Sao Paulo the last uh, Brazilian team that we had to cover where do they sit currently because last year they were pretty strong they won the cup well Sao Paulo I will put them like around dark horse candidates mainly dark horse to be honest i will put them dark horse because they lost their star center back lucas beraldo to psg in the january transfer window and that's like a huge miss for them caleri still scores but so paulo been struggling a lot i can see them quarterfinals as well uh, pablo maya is a good prospect he's like a midfielder but other than that i cannot see so paulo go that far this libertadores it seems like we have a lot of teams that you know they they are really good they are competitive but they are nowhere near the level of the candidates and the favorites we have a lot of teams that are here kind of in the middle which is going to make things very interesting when these teams play against each other deportivo tachira from venezuela is probably going to be um, get the back team they are probably the team that plays the best football in Venezuela every time I've watched them, but it's going to be very difficult this uh, Libertadores. The level is too high for Venezuelan teams and they are probably going to get destroyed, uh, sadly. I'm going to let them surprise me, I suppose. Well, yeah, it's another Venezuelan team. It'll be another StatPad team. All these Venezuelan teams are. They are another dark horse. <laughs> I feel like it's another team that doesn't have enough to push into candidates but it's really really strong again in the league they drew a game against uh river a really really back and forth game that they could have won if they finished better but then they drop points against like lower bottom of the table teams they are very inconsistent like i mentioned they lost uh the Chagra, their main CDM to uh, River actually, uh, but they still have a great team. They are very competitive and the atmosphere at their stadium is just really, really good and it's very difficult to travel to. They are obviously going to compete again the same way they competed the last time they were in Libertadores where they made uh, quarterfinals. It was in 2022, so now they are back and I feel like they can probably repeat quarterfinals or round of 16. The same as Estudiantes, same as Rosario Central, same as uh, San Lorenzo, very good team a lot of talent uh, Garro is a team a creative midfielder that I really like and I really wanted Boca to sign for many many years now he's still bowling out for Talleres he creates a lot of chances they have great talent but they are inconsistent as well so I, I don't know what to make out of all these teams and 
I'm just gonna throw them in dark horses they could make fours potentially. Yeah, Ty- Tayares as well. I feel like they're a decent team. I remember facing them two years ago in the group stage. They were not an easy team to face, especially away in Argentina. Hmm. They will probably be like the quarterfinal. Like most of these teams from Argentina are gonna mm-hmm. be like quarterfinal. I-, I feel the same way. I feel like a lot of these teams have the capacity to reach that quarterfinal, but once they're there and they're probably on a face like Flamengo, Fluminense, Palmeiras, Mineiro is gonna be very, really, really difficult. Another creative player that they got uh, this transfer window is uh, Bota. They got him from Colón. Colón who relegated, but Bota was by far their best player and Bota is another really good creative player. The strongest from uh, Bolivia will disappoint because I don't think because of the altitude, they are not going to be destroyed. Um, they are probably going to get points from the teams that are here in the bottom, but they are probably another team that you probably want to get in the group. Traveling to the altitude is not going to be easy, but after that, at home, you can most likely beat them. They are kind of like Bolivar, but don't really have the good team to back up the altitude, I feel like. Yeah, I will also have the strongest that um, will disappoint. But you know, they can compete at some times. Like, I've seen them do it, especially in, in their altitude, obviously they will. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. Maybe but we like, can push them up to will compete. But like a way, like they can know. do something. Like it depends, on, like what kind of team. So like they're around there. Yeah, the point yeah, they or... they are proven. I guess I can put, put them up to will compete. Like you said, they've proven that they can be competitive. I just don't think they are making round of sixteen but they can probably make it close. The very last team, Universitario from Peru, um, I feel like it's gonna be a get the bag team because I feel like they are even worse than Alianza Lima. The only player that I recognize from them is uh, Edinson Flores, El Oreja, who was like a very good player for the Peruvian national team. Obviously not anymore, but um, we know that Peru has fallen off uh, massively. Universitario, I feel like it's another team that is probably gonna get better in the group stage. And, you're probably gonna want to get them. Same as Alianza Lima, but Alianza Lima has a bit more pedigree to their team, so Universitario I'm gonna have to put them in the very last position. Yeah, Universitario, we won the Libertadores at their stadium. They are mm-hmm. like probably second best Peruvian team, but that says a lot about their league. Uh, they're also gonna be like a team that everyone <laughs> yeah. is gonna they want to have that stat bad team. And Edison Flores, I used to rate them a lot. In the national team so like you said it's not the same player anymore i remember Copa america 2019 he was great at that yeah it, it just doesn't cut it anymore so i hope you guys enjoyed the ranking make sure to subscribe to the channel for more copa libertadores content coming up very soon i'll be seeing you guys next time